This is Narwhal's newest robot vacuum and mop. It's called Frio Z Ultra, or Z, whatever you say. Now, it's probably labeled with the last letter of the alphabet because honestly, I don't know what they're going to improve after this. This latest model has some of the most impressive improvements and it has leapt this company forward in terms of its performance. You know, things like 12,000 pascals of suction power, electrolyzed water, and a vacuum debris system that you only have to empty a couple of times a year. Those are great examples but there's more. So I'm gonna show you how all of this works as we walk through an unboxing, a setup, an install, and then I'll show you what it's like living with this and we'll run through a couple of tests. I'm gonna give you all of the details straight about what's great and not so great about Frio Z Ultra. So let's give her. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and my goal here on the channel is to save you time and money on your journey to live smarter. And one of the best ways to do that is to save your time by spending money on a robot vacuum and mop. And I think combo units like this are where most of the value sits today, but a lot of companies do not do mopping very well. That's one of the reasons I've always enjoyed Narwhal's products. Now, it's a pretty big box that you get. Inside of the box, you'll be greeted with a small manual that you see I haven't opened up. You also get a fairly substantial power cable, a pair of color-coded sweepers, and of course, the robot vacuum itself. Now, the robot vacuum has a lot of stickers on it. It comes with the mopping pads installed here, and the roller brush, of course, is already installed. There's also a little ramp or little edge piece that goes on the edge of the base station that helps the robot vacuum stay in and it keeps the mess inside of the base station. The base station itself is a larger unit. At the bottom of the base station, you'll find a container with Narwhal's specialized detergent in it. You get an extra vacuum bag, which is quite large and a lot bigger than some of the other units I've reviewed. There's also an additional filter for inside of the robot vacuum, and you get four of these new side baseboard pads. Then you get this thing called the insert bin, and you actually get an extra inside of the box. It houses dry material inside of the robot vacuum before it gets sucked up into the vacuum bag inside of the base station. Now, lifting the top of the base station also reveals two bins. These are your water bins. Uh, the purple is clean water and the clear one is dirty water. The robot vacuum itself is kind of the standard size that we've seen developed in the industry. Kind of fades into the background. I like the white color that's being used here, although I have seen there is a black color option available for both the vacuum and the base station, which is new for Narwhal. I already showed these little rollers, but they are fairly specialized. They're actually triangular. They are Velcroed to this, so they're an easy replacement module. Uh, the other thing that is really important on the bottom is this roller. This is a zero tangle roller brush. It's been on a couple of models and it does actually work. You won't find hair and debris and different things jammed up in here. There are a number of fall detection sensors inside of here. And on the front, not only do you have what is a fairly standard little pad that, you know, lets the robot vacuum know it's run into something, but you also have this dual camera sensor system. So this is brand new for Narwhal. It's the first true dual RGB camera that I've seen. And that is combined with the LiDAR system on top of that, as well as those other sensors. So there's a lot packed into this. The other thing that's really important about robot vacuums, you know, these wheels, they can go quite far up and down. And you might be noticing, I have my little side baseboard cleaner installed there. So it just clips in under here. 
It's an interesting little addition. Now the base station, it has a bit of a different look and feel versus some of the previous versions. You know, you got a brush metal a cover on the front. I think that's gonna wear really well over time. Plus it gives the base station that different look. The other thing that's really nice about the base station is that you get four buttons on top or four controls. So this is how you can control Narwhal just from the base station. If you're ever having problems with the app or you're just having problems in general, this is a good option. One of the neat things about that control panel is the little play button is customizable. You're going to be able to press that and have the robot vacuum take on the task that you want it to. So you can make that specific to your home. Now you also get a little quick start guide, which tells you how to get this set up and installed. So let's move on to that and I'll show you what that process is like. First step, flip this over. This is pretty simple. They give you these little side sweepers and just get those on. There's a little bit of alignment you have to do here. Step one, now you can take all the stickers off. Oof, look at that. So two cameras, okay, and a full LiDAR system. Step three is to locate your base station, plug it in, kind of get it prepped. Now, for myself, I think I'm going to plug it in all the way here at the end of my kitchen island. This is going to give me a meter out approximately, which is what Narwhal is asking for, just to make sure that the robot vacuum can get in. Okay, we need two other things for this part of the process. So this has a guide right on it uh, that says what you're supposed to do. I'm gonna leave that guide on. And you're just supposed to push this into place. Oh, once I had it right, that was very easy. Step four is actually to pull this off. So if you didn't know, this cover comes right off. We gotta get in here because we need to put our detergent or our special formulated floor cleaner. So, so there is a best before date on here before 2027 for this. Uh, I have used this cleaner before fairly soft. Uh, I don't have any concerns about putting it on my own floor. To get this on, there's a little latch right here. And you just wanna get that in. There's a little gap right there. Clean water tank. This is the dirty one. Water filling. There's a max fill line right here. Grab this. So, Gonna lift this up. And they give you a little diagram here, okay? And you'll notice there's little connections on the bottom. There we go. There we go. Um, so we'll just do that and then. Back here. These are the charging pads. So those are what need to go into the back of the station here and back there. And we heard it beep, so it did start charging. Okay, we're ready to get this set up. I'm gonna open up Narwhal Frio's app. It's available on iOS or Android. You can see other models you might have installed in your home. So if you have a couple, you could swipe uh, to the right or left to get to that other model. Now we're gonna add a device and now we have to select the product. Just because it's not a choice here, I'm going to use the scan QR code. This is a brand new product, so this happens to me sometimes, but you'll just be able to choose it on that page. 
So we had to lift the cover and now I have to agree to their privacy policy. I don't know if you saw, but their privacy policy actually says that pictures and things from the dual camera system are not going to show up anywhere else. So we're ready to do a Wi-Fi configuration. You will need Wi-Fi at 2.4 gigahertz. Make sure Bluetooth is turned on as you do this and make sure you're close to the robot vacuum. Now you'll choose your Wi-Fi network and you'll place in your Wi-Fi password. So there it goes, it's now trying to connect to my Wi-Fi. If you have any troubles with this, you are able to see the five different parts of the process. So, you know, if you're not making a good Bluetooth connection, you can always try a different phone. Uh, if it's not receiving the Wi-Fi information, then it's probably not actually uh, making a good Bluetooth connection. There's a few things you can do here. If it's not connecting to your Wi-Fi though, uh, we have a great video, I'll link it down below, that tells you how to upgrade your Wi-Fi because it could be that kind of a problem for you. So now we're done the setup process and you can see a few things on the front here. Uh, it says what the model name is. Obviously it's named it very basically for you. You can see the battery charge percentage. So if you want, you can wait on that and you can see what status the unit is in. Now to go in, you're ready to do a mapping of your home. So what you wanna do is kind of prepare your floor and your home, just uh, get the objects off of it that you're not gonna normally have there, and then you're gonna run this little map. We're going along, we're mapping, but I just wanna show you a couple of things I did do here. So this is the basement door. It's left open enough that Narwhal can get in there, kind of clean out that spot. Now, it's not gonna fall down those stairs, or I don't think it is. The other thing I did, uh, I, I just moved some shoes and things off of there for the initial mapping. I don't think you need to do that regularly, but uh, that's a good thing to do. Otherwise, my home is pretty clear, uh, except for, you know, uh, but there you go. And I let it deal with a couple of tougher situations. So uh, these stools are obviously a little difficult for a robot vacuum. They have a little ramp up. So that could be a bit of a problem for most, but this did very well. It mapped them and it's moved on. Now it's just going along. You'll notice I didn't deal with that cable down there. That's a test point. Oh, here it goes. Just checked. Because it's mapping, it's not gonna clean it. Uh, the other thing, you know, even little mats like this, carpets, things like that, you should leave those on the ground, let it do that mapping, let it figure that out. And the one thing I did, you know, I'm still waiting for a garage to be built, so these have been sitting in the back for a while, but I left them and I let it go through, it got through the middle of this stand right here. So I've been, already very impressed with its mapping capabilities. So it just told me mapping's done, it's ready, and here we have different rooms, different things all broken out. So we can label these rooms, we can edit this map, do a lot of things, but I think most people are just gonna wanna start a clean immediately. Okay, Narwhal's all set up in my home. I did move it and run a remapping here of my home. I didn't wanna deal with the sun beating down on all of our shots here in the video. So we've moved it here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the unit, show you what you can do inside of the app, show you what it's like to live with this device. And I'm gonna put it through some pretty tough tests as we go through a demo. So let's start by running our Narwhal Frio Z Ultra. So we're here in the application. You can see that I have a number of rooms that have been found by the map, and I'll show you in a bit how to adjust this map. There's also a number of objects that have been found. So it'll say other in certain cases, and then in other cases, you can see it identified that as a cable. Now, to get the unit started, you have to first pick what you want to clean and then what you want to uh, do for a cleaning. Now, the first thing to choose is whether you're going to do a room 
or a zone. So if you do zone, you can just expand or contract that box quite small, move it around in your home. And then when you're ready to select the area, there is a limitation on how small you can do. Then you can press that check mark and that will set it in. And then you're going to choose the mode. Now, if you want to choose the different rooms in your home, let's say we wanted to do the kitchen here first. Well, uh, we could select multiple rooms. If we'd like, we can unselect them. We can go through and select all these different things, or we could just do a single room. And then we have to select what we'd like to do. Then I can hit the little, uh, you saw just the little two dots there on any of these modes. So we have vacuum and mop, and we have vacuum then mop, vacuum, mop individually, and a full customization option. If I choose customization, now I can choose all the cleaning parameters per room. So if I wanna change how uh, much suction or how many times the unit is going over an area. So if I want vacuum and mop cycle three times, I can set the suction power and the mopping, I can change those. And then how precise do I want it to cover my whole home? Okay, if I had heavy duty detergent, which is another option that you can put into this unit, I could do all that. So this would allow me to set a customized mode for my kitchen to really, really clean it, obviously. And I just gotta hit save if I'd like to do that. But most of the time, you're going to choose to use Frio mode. Okay, so on any of these modes, you can always turn off Frio mode, but Frio mode is the AI, it's the intelligence of this vacuum to just make decisions. When you're ready to go, you can hit start cleaning and you can see that I just have this selected or you can hit this play button. Before I do that, let me show you what happens when I hit that button. We're ready to hit the button. I'm gonna hit that. Okay, so what it's doing right now is it's... So it just said it's preparing electrolyzed water. You see that light right there? It's making sure that it has electrolyzed water to push into the robot vacuum. That's very good from a bacteria standpoint with the water that's being stored in there. Uh, then it's actually washing the mop right now. So it's ensuring that your mops are clean before it goes out in case they weren't cleaned perfectly the last time it went into the station. So it's just preparing the unit to head out. At any time, you can tap into here to see the different things that have been done. So as it's going through the different parts of its cleaning, you'll notice that decisions are being made in here when you're using things like Frio mode. Yeah, this usually takes a minute, a minute and a half, and then it'll pop out of there. So it just said it's done washing the mopping pads. It did wash it with hot water, and now it's coming out. It's been about a minute and 50 seconds, and here we go, we're off to our job. So now from this point on, I can monitor inside of the application what path the unit has taken. So right there, you can see the unit, and as it goes about doing things, it's going to be reporting that back to the application. Now, I can also watch this in 3D mode. I don't find that to be a really useful feature at this point, but let's set up for our first test. One of the things that you will notice with Narwhal is that it does the edge cleaning first. So you can see the wetness level there. And as it does this cleaning, first of all, you've got that little side pad now, and that is just rubbed up against baseboards, other surfaces. And you can see that it does this, what's called edge swing as it goes around. And that's just making sure it's getting up against your different surfaces, your different edges. Then it goes into the middle of an area and cleans. Look at how careful it is getting around that object. And this is a tough situation for a robot vacuum to deal with. You know, it's trying to get into every little area, but it can't. It's just not physically small enough to do this. 
And also, I'm, I'm getting in the way physically. So this is really strong navigation. Okay, so we're just going along. Everything seems fine. And oh my God, someone threw a bowl in front of us. Let's see what it does. Oh, it's pushing it around. But it has reacted now. You see that difference? So it took two or three seconds and then it reacted. And that was a glass bowl. So I was really messing with the unit here. It hurts my heart a little to do this, but Okay. So you can see from my baseboards, you know, they're fairly tall baseboards. We're not getting along the top. I wouldn't expect to get along the top here uh, with that little pad. It's just brushing along the sides, not doing a really deep cleaning, but this is the first stage that we've seen of what they call 3D cleaning. Oh, my hands smell like that cereal now. So now that it has done the edges, it's now filling in the gaps, but it's being very meticulous about where it's going to uh, go next and how it's covering our floor plan. So it's a back and forth pattern. And I think that's really important for just making sure that it gets everything. Now, let's see as it comes to this. See how it's avoiding the spill? This is interesting. So it's still mopping. Let's watch this. This is very interesting. It's literally choosing not to go over that. Look, oh my gosh, it is gonna work. It's... <gasps> it raised its suction power. It slowed down the arms. It's not mopping. Whoa. It totally switched mode because there was a spill. And now it's picking up all, all this different stuff. This is wild stuff. And I'm betting in about 10 seconds, it goes back and turns on the mops again. There it is. It turned on the mops. That was amazing. It turned back on the mops, went back over the area. It's totally clean. There's one piece I can see right there from that entire mess. That was great. Oh, are you kidding me? Look at it, it stopped. So it just finished the entire task. And this is one of the kind of magical things about Narwhal. When you're using Frio mode, basically the robot vacuum is going to make decisions as to whether to come back out. So I put down the little bit of maple syrup there and as it went over that space, it made the decision, hey, I gotta go back, I gotta wash the mops so I don't spread this around really far and then I gotta come back out. And it will do this when it finds those big messes. So not only did it stop the rotating brushes, I also know that inside it actually stops the roller brush. 
stops from getting all of that really disgusting and it just uses the mops to clean up that kind of a mess so not only did it do that but it came back out cleaned up the mess and dealt with it without my intervention so this is one of the greatest parts of owning one of these and i thought i would demonstrate that for you okay now narwhal has stopped vacuuming it has stopped uh, mopping entirely you see it's just trying to head somewhere oh ran into that it's heading back to our base station so now what's happening and you can see this all in the app it's preparing more electrolyzed water it's mopping and if it had to it would suck the contents out into the vacuum bag here so what it's ultimately doing is making sure that it has the proper tools to clean the floors and it's making sure that it's not spreading messes around my home so full cleaning going on here so it's just navigating around my stools uh, it's quite good at that but let me show you what happens you know in the middle of this if you don't like how it's cleaning so we're in Frio mode but we can still make some decisions if I'd like I can turn up the suction power just like that uh, in other modes you can change the mopping wetness you can really adjust that and if I'd like I can also make changes to the base station and lots of the things that go on there so if I want to wash the mop I can send it back to do that I can recall it to the base station and you see base station dust collection there's other things here start mop drying uh, I can do those things anytime I'd like I can also look at the accessories and see the level that they're at what ones are installed and what ones aren't and then I can manage this from a maintenance standpoint you can see all the different intervals and what I have to do eventually so I have to eventually replace that dust bag I got an extra but there you go 52 days one of the things that's really nice about that is I can tap in here I get nice pictures a nice guide and then when I've done that I can reset the countdown uh, and because I've done that replacement so any of these accessories if you're having trouble with or you've hit that interval first of all you'll get a notification but you can also see how to deal with that one of the things I've been really impressed with is how it just got so close to that cable okay I just left that cable sitting out it knew it was there it didn't push it and yet it still got really close in terms of its cleaning all right now I left the cable out like this just so I could show you what happens inside of the application this is how uh, narwhal is doing the recognition the object recognition so you can see right here this is a picture it's taking and just before you kind of get upset that your pictures are being sent over the cloud I had to enable this feature you don't have to ever have the pictures come off the unit but I enabled this so I could see what the camera was you know looking at and it's quite a wide angle and you can see it's correctly identifying that cable sitting there it also went perfectly around it one of the things that's always good to know is how loud your robot vacuum is so you know when it's running it's about 60 to 65 decibels here it's redoing the mops and it's around 55 to 60 decibels anything in those levels is really good um, you know I, I've seen a lot louder units out there so they've really focused on this and I'll show you when it's actually cleaning the mops or drying the mops later just how impressive it is one of the most interesting things about this is how quiet it is after it's done so right now it is heating and drying the mops out so it's heating it to uh, for antibacterial reasons and it's drying the mops for the same reason 
but it's silent. You can't hear this thing. Uh, my meter says it's completely silent, even when I'm right up against this. Uh, it's very impressive. Now, there's actually a setting where you can turn uh, it on to a, a more intense drying and uh, disinfecting process, but honestly, what's the point? Uh, the other thing is most of the time when it comes back, it's not pulling the debris out from a vacuuming standpoint. So that's actually really nice because that's quite a loud sound. So it's only doing that when it's required. Now I'm going to pull the unit out and I'm going to show you the way they store things is a little bit different too. There's a couple of things to show you. So first of all, pull the cover off and then we have what is fairly normal for most robot vacuums. What's different about this is, you know, the wet debris has already been pulled up into the base station uh, and it's in the dirty water tank. But look in this little thing, and this is something you have to replace every once in a while, but that's the dry debris. So it's not being mixed. That ends up uh, lengthening the life of this kind of a component and just making sure that the unit's not disgusting. Now, if I wanted, I could pull this out at any point and I can replace it or I could just empty that out. So it's up to you, but I really like that improvement in design because it means this isn't so gross. The other thing that's super important is how this looks. I wanna show you from a bit of a different angle. Now. These are the, they're called Rulo, I think. They're triangular mops. I interrupted the drying, but uh, they're fairly clean. And I've actually put this unit through quite a bit now. The other thing right here, this is called a zero tangle roll brush. This has been on a couple of units and I have yet to see actually anything tangled in here. So you know how with most robot vacuums, you get this uh, little cutter tool. You don't get that with this and it's not necessary. So, you know, the bottom of this unit is being maintained really well by Narwhal through their different processes and the different components that they're using. And now that we're at the end of the process, uh, I can acknowledge that everything's done. I get this little notification and I can view the details, which gives me that full summary. It tells me what's going on in terms of, you know, the pressure adjustments that the device has made when it detected that all that cereal and stuff. Uh, so increase suction power temporarily, right? It's done all of that, and I think uh, this is really great to look at a few times. Plus, you can see how long did it take and the area that was covered. So you learn a lot about your home. Then you just acknowledge that you're all done, and you're ready to go again anytime you'd like. A lot of people are probably going to use the task management. So this is where you can just create a new scheduled task, uh, any time of the week, you can copy things that you've just done and you can also set full custom parameters. So you could say, okay, I want to clean my living room and how do you want to clean that? You can set all of that. And once you've, let's say you set all of those modes and all of those things, you can schedule it. You can schedule it for a specific date and you can also schedule it as a repeating event. So this automates the unit where you don't have to really touch it at all. So you've seen generally what it's like to live with Narwhal and showed you some really interesting features when it came to how this avoided objects and how it even avoided objects as things changed on the fly. What's new and different about this comes down to a few of the specifications but also the sensors and the decision-making system that's on board. So what's special to me is that we have that true dual RGB camera. 
that's being used in conjunction with the LiDAR sensor system and the other sensors like the ones for fall detection. This really sets it apart. No matter what situation I put it in, it makes good decisions. This is both navigating nearly perfect and it's getting things clean because of its decision-making capabilities. And that is mostly based off of the two RGB cameras with the LiDAR system. Uh, there's also a lot of processing power that's been packed into this and the fact that I've seen it make decisions on the fly is very different than some of the other competitors and very different than some of the previous Narwhal versions they've put out. This live decision making tells me how much they're processing and it's been very accurate. Now one of the biggest upgrades to me is how clean this unit is going to be over the long haul. This was something that I found in a recent comparison video. I did this with some other brands and actually the previous generation of Narwhal. Now things have actually been improved even more here. But that little insert bin is keeping the dry debris separated from the wet stuff. Now this is so important because it keeps the system that pulls the dirty water from getting completely jammed up. And even more importantly, when Narwhal is suctioning the dry debris into the base station and into that dust bag, that is a really strong suction and it goes on for a long time but the debris is also not wet, so you're not gonna jam up that system either. And, you know, just because that wasn't enough, Narwhal is also drying the bag inside of the base station. This was something that I've found as a problem on a lot of robot vacuums. They can actually get moldy on the outside. That problem's gone, as well as a number of other problems, and it results in everything being maintained really well. Additionally, Narwhal has really focused and made sure that their cleaning components are being kept clean. What that's going to do over time is keep the right components being used in the right situation and it's going to eliminate those components getting dirty with something they shouldn't be getting dirty with. Finally, you know, the biggest upgrade here is how they are cleaning the mopping pads. This has always been really good with Narwhal, but this last version now has a heating module in the base station. So you're disinfecting while you're drying. And that's actually something they did with the little S10 Pro that you've been seeing sitting next to this. That will disinfect and heat the roller on that unit and it was extremely helpful for keeping that roller from getting dirty and disgusting. Something that Narwhal hasn't always done really well is their vacuuming power and that has been really changed here. Uh, the suction power on this is one of the highest, if not the highest in the industry. There's probably a couple units out there claiming a little more, but honestly, it's impressive now. That makes it much better on carpets, and I've already seen that. The next big improvement I wanna point out is related to the navigation system. A lot of people are probably gonna be concerned about having a couple of cameras on their robot vacuum. Now, you can use those cameras in the app to drive around this unit and see your home if you'd like, but this thing that I'm talking about was on one of the labels when I first unboxed the unit. That label tells you that all of the processing is happening on board for those cameras. It's not being sent back to the app in the cloud and so all of the processing is happening locally on here. That means Narwhal had to put enough processing power on the unit. Most importantly, it means that your data is not being sent to the cloud when it comes to these cameras. And finally, you know, we didn't show this enough in the living with Narwhal section, but one of the most impressive pieces of that object detection and the navigation module is how this new robot can avoid smaller objects. I can't believe how well it does both identifying objects, but specifically cables. You know, moving around the cables and avoiding them and still cleaning really close to them, this is extremely impressive. And I think everyone has to deal with this situation in their home when they have a robot vacuum. So 
This has essentially eliminated that problem. Now, there's a few more things that you'll wanna know about Narwhal. So let me go through a few of the settings that you can fine tune. We'll talk about things like uh, how to adjust maps and how to make additional ones so you can take this up to a second floor. We're in the app and you know if you have a couple of other Narwhal products, you can just swipe left and right, you can add a device that way. But when we're talking about your Frio Ultra here, you get these little quick tasks along the bottom. You can always press to create a new one. So you can hit plus and let's say you just wanted to clean a specific room. You can make all of the adjustments, choose what you're doing. And that can be a new task that sits both here in the app and sits right here. So you can just tap that and it will actually run that. Now you can see a couple of status things, but in general, you're gonna to wanna to head into the application and control it here. So you've already seen earlier in the video how you can do rooms and zones and you can add additional zones. Over here are all of your different options right off the home page. So you can see your 3D map, which is kind of neat to see. Not sure it's a big deal just yet, but uh, it is nice to at least see what's been identified. So you saw my kitchen table there. The biggest thing you're going to want to address is your map. Now you can go into map editing, which then allows you to do things like split rooms. You can split any room. You've got to select that room in order to split it. So let's say I wanted to split this room in half there. I can do that. Now on the flip side, there's also a merge feature. So if I wanted to, I could select a couple of rooms and then merge them together. You can always adjust the names of your room. So for example, this is actually a bathroom. So I can change that. You can choose to customize, but there are all of these other pre-made options for you there. You can add in furniture. You can change the floor material of any room, but Narwhal figures out what your floor material is on its own. It also adds carpets. So you can see there's a carpet here, a little mat here actually, and it identified our little registers as a piece of carpet, so to speak. And you can also set what you want to do with the carpet. So, you know, I think clean the carpet is the best choice, but you've got to set that as a default. So that can be very important. You can also set no-go zones. So if there's certain things that you don't want Narwhal to handle, for example, this is actually outside my home. So I don't need Narwhal to try and go out there. So if you don't want it to vacuum or you don't want it to vacuum and mop, you can select that here. There's also this heavily soiled room option and that in general will be automatically detected by the robot. So you don't need to do that. But if you know, you know, this corridor is always going to be disgusting, I can choose that and uh, save it. You can actually make physical adjustments here. So this to me, I don't think anyone's going to need to do that. But if you did notice something a little off in your room, uh, maybe a wall just seems like it's in the wrong place or it's not getting close enough to that room, you could make uh, that little adjustment. One of the more important things is that you can create multiple maps. So you can see up to four maps and you can create a new map. You just carry your robot upstairs, uh, downstairs, wherever you want to take it, and then hit new secondary map and it will go around and map. You don't have to take the base station there, but obviously if it has to recharge or it needs more water because it's been mopping, uh, you're going to have to take it back to the base station. In most cases, just leave on Frio mode. Honestly, it behaves very well. Now, if you want to schedule anything, you're back here to the task screen. We saw that earlier and you can schedule a task. And if you'd like, you can choose a specific date or to repeat it. When I went into settings, this is where the rubber hits the road and you might run into a couple of things you want to uh, look at. If you ever lose your robot, you can hit that and it actually calls out. It says, hey, I'm right here. Uh, you can restart or reset the network or unpair it. So if you ever need a factory reset, do things again, you can do that. Always check your firmware. You know, it's saying here to me, I have the latest version, but leaving auto update on is usually a good thing to do. As we get to this section, this is where we get some of these interesting features. When we go into Frio mode, this is one of the most important things. So it says intensive cleaning for extremely soiled areas. What it's actually talking about is what we saw earlier in the video, where it kind of went around the edges of really big messes and then chooses which mode it needs to be in. So for wet messes, it does the mop and for the dry messes, it does the other parts of the unit. Edge mode, you know what? 
just do smart. Uh, it'll wiggle to clean the edges. That's how you get the little edge swing. If you've installed a heavy duty detergent, which is gonna be from Narwhal, you can turn that on. So that's how it will know to use that. Suction, mopping, and coverage. You'll notice they have smart chosen in all of these, but you can set that suction power all the time. So if you want it to be super powerful all the time, there you go. Otherwise you can leave it as smart and it will adjust as it needs to. Now this is furthered inside of clean. Uh, the mops that you have on that unit, you know, you want to keep them fairly well maintained. And one of the ways you do that is by setting this. Now you can set it by square footage, or by room and you know they have a good default here the other thing to understand is that when you're in frio mode it's going to return to the base station when it needs to so if it's finding really dirty parts of your home it's still going to go back all of these different things these are pretty self-explanatory so stairless mode is maybe the only one that really needs an explanation here if you turn that on it could go down the stairs it's going to kind of ignore its fall sensors or it's going to at least ignore them to to a certain extent so just watch that one now the base station does have some additional options so you want it to automatically add detergent if you don't you can say that right here the automatic dustbin and bag bacterial control i think that's really great but you can review the health index of your dust bag so that's a really nice thing to see now drying intensity if you do this, you never hear the unit drying itself and you can set these other two things. Obviously, a strong airflow is going to dry things out a little faster, but it's a little noisier, so that's up to you. There is a do not disturb mode option, which I'll show you in a bit. So smart drying is kind of a nice option because it'll do strong drying and then silent in the evenings, basically. What do you want as a default cleaning mode? So this is if you start the unit, pressing the start and stop button on the base station, that's how you customize what it's gonna do right there. Do you want the temperature controlled mopping system? So this will heat the water based on dirt sense detection results, okay? Uh, this cleans the mopping pad, so this is your heater on that. Auto dust collection, every time it comes back to the station, do you want it to pull the dust out of the unit? Even the uh, dust collection can be adjusted, so if you want it to be quieter than you saw in today's video, you can actually do that. You can adjust the device's language. Uh, there are a few choices here and you can adjust the volume on the device itself. So if you just wanna hear it uh, really loud, well, go ahead. Now, AI obstacle avoidance, okay? So one of the neat things about the map is that you, you get these little uh, objects on the map as it goes and it identifies things. Now, this right here, if you turn this on, there is a privacy policy about that. So it's a little bit different than what we talked about earlier in the video where we said, hey, all those pictures are being done on the device. You can adjust that if you want this feature. I don't think there's a big reason to have a real photo, but that's up to you. Maybe you're running into a problem. And then, you know, obstacle avoidance strategy in general, I find smart works really well, but you can set safety if you really are finding you're having problems. There are two other buttons here. So this allows you to look at the live video. There is a privacy statement about this, so it's a little bit different. You have to activate video by pressing and holding the base station buttons for two seconds within five minutes. Okay, so in order to kind of get the ability to drive around your unit, that's what you have to do. Now, one of the biggest features of this is that you can control the entire base station. I've shown you this earlier in the video. You can also see the status of your accessories. So lots of these buttons are things that you can press on. So if you wanna wash the mops in the middle of the day, or you just wanna wash them again because they didn't get clean, there you go. And you can end the mop drying at any time. So if it's bugging you, there you go. You have the ability to cause the dust collection to happen, and you can disinfect that dust bag in there. Normally, robot vacuums they're light on integration and automation options. And truthfully, this is too. It has basic integration with Amazon's voice assistant where you can start and stop the unit. Otherwise, there aren't any integrations to speak of. There isn't matter here, nor is there any sort of additional smart home hubs that you can connect this to. It's kind of standing on its own. And that is fairly typical for robot vacuums today. So most of the automations you're gonna have are related to the scheduling feature inside of this unit, inside of their app. If you'd like to get yourself a Narwhal Frio Z Ultra, 
The links are down below. I can't say enough about this unit. I hope it's pretty clear that we are at a different point with robot vacuums. These are now worth it in a lot of cases to me because they are actually saving time. And now I think you can see the decision-making capability of this is something else. The good news for you is at launch, Narwhal has a huge discount on Z Ultra. You can get it for just $10.99 until October 8th through their early bird deal, which is a huge chunk off the regular price. So check the description for details on that. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, live smart.